Good afternoon from Hong Kong and good evening in uh, in the States. Uh, many of you are, some of you may be joining us from the States. I know our speakers uh, for this inaugural, um, the Asian Founder Series uh, is joining us from uh, San Jose. So before we get turn over to our two speakers and our moderator, um, I just wanna welcome you. Uh, um, I'm Alice Fong, Executive Director of Asia Society Hong Kong Center. Uh, welcome to this Asian Founder Series. Uh, as I said before, this is our first uh, inaugural uh, in this series that we hope to bring to you in, in the months to come. Tonight, today, today's topic is from Hong Kong to Silicon Valley, uh, Hong Kong's game-changing slam dunk startups. And tonight's speaker um, is, today's speaker is two Hong Konger who are now uh, doing some incredible work uh, in Silicon Valley, and they're going to tell you more about it. Uh, Philip Lam is a co-founder of Home Court, uh, a mobile AI application for basketball training. Uh, it has raised uh, US dollar 14.5 million, led by the NBA and NBA team owners ownership groups and the MBA WNBA players. At Home Court, he oversees products and engineering and drive company strategy and organizational process. Uh, and he's also a founding member uh, of Founders Hong Kong, a nonprofit aimed to build community to br bridge Hong Kong and Silicon Valley tech ecosystem. Uh, our next speaker, Edith Yun, is also a founding member of the Founders Hong Kong. Uh, Edith is a general partner at Race Capital, an early stage Silicon Valley venture capital fund. Uh, a, a few sectors uh, they, they are particularly interested in, in infrastructure, fintech, and deep tech verticals. Uh, she has invested in over 50 startups uh, and she has a really interesting career. She frequently speaks on China and Silicon Valley technology and investment landscape. And, uh, and she's also a frequent guest lecturer at Berkeley and Stanford and commentator on BBC and um, other uh, media outlets. So today's moderator is John Artman. Uh, John is with SEMP. Uh, he joined SEMP a few months ago and he is the tech editor uh, coming uh, for 12 years in Beijing before recoding relocating to Hong Kong uh, about a few months ago. So we're delighted that John is gonna be moderate uh, this today's session and, uh, and I'm gonna turn it over to John. John? Well, great, thank you so much, Alice. So I think first we're gonna have, uh, have Philip um, give us a bit of background on um, what exactly Home Court is. For sure, um, thanks for having me uh, by the way. So let me get started uh, with a couple of slides. So hi everyone, um, this is Philip. I actually born and raised in Hong Kong and my native language still Cantonese. Uh, hello. <laughs> I, I, I indeed, I also graduated from, from Hong Kong. I got a math degree from CUK a uh, long time ago. Then I went to Vancouver, Canada um, for a master degree uh, and started my engine, engineering career right after in Microsoft. Um, so this is me. Uh, if you watch NBA, you can know that's Steve Nash uh, standing next to me with a ball signed by him. Uh, that was really one of the most delighted moments I had in, in this um, startup journey because Steve is one of my uh, favorite players back then uh, when he played in the, in the Phoenix Sun and he got two times MVP uh, uh, back there. So uh, just a little bit history about myself and what I'm doing. Uh, after I joined Microsoft uh, in Seattle, I uh, worked, worked there for a few years 
then you know, I think it's, it's about time to, to go to the Silicon Valley. Um, that's the time I joined Apple. Indeed, I uh, got recruited by one of my current co-founder. He, he was one of the senior I, I knew back in CHK. He got me into the Apple's team. And, and then four of us quit Apple at 2017, uh, May, and we started HomeCore together. Other than my um, startup or engineering career, I actually also kept involved quite a bit in, in nonprofit or in particular like uh, mentoring or startup advising. So uh, as Alex um, introduced a little bit, I'm one of the founding members of Founders Hong Kong and I'm also involved in uh, mentoring and first round capital and Founders Institute, et cetera, et cetera. Before I talk about home court, uh, what it is and, and the company uh, background, I actually wanted to introduce a team first. This is a pretty um, precious picture, I would say. Uh, it's, it's one of our team reunion, but it's back in 2018, exactly the same time. We, we were planning to do this kind of thing uh, every year. Actually, let me do a full screen. We, we kind of uh, plan to do a reunion every year, um, but unfortunately we cannot come back in 2019 uh, because of the Hong Kong situation, travel is not recommended. And obviously in the last year, uh, we can come back to. So this, this is kind of, you know, like <laughs> the last um, whole company picture we took um, two years ago. We're really looking forward to, you know, things getting better next year and get the whole team together. Um, right now we are a bigger team than this picture already. Um, we have roughly 30 people and split pretty evenly across the US and Hong Kong office. Uh, this is the Hong Kong office, actually. I believe the, the US people nice, like to come to Hong Kong rather than the other way around. Uh, because uh, to be honest, Hong Kong is a, is a, is a much more fun city uh, than, than San Jose or even San Francisco. That's uh, just my opinion. Um, so with that, I wanted to start uh, by doing a quick demo of Home Court um, to tell you guys what, what Home Court is. Let me switch over to, to my form here. Can you guys see my form okay? Yep. Yeah, it looks good. Awesome. Yep. So HomeCourt is a mobile AI application for basketball training. Launching the app, you see, you know, we have roughly more than 100 uh, activities. It covers many categories of basketball or some even like more general um, physical exercise like conditioning. Uh, I want to demonstrate a few, you know, feature, uh, kind of a flagship feature of home court. Let's start with a uh, shooting workout, which is actually one of our very, very first feature um, that, that we built. So right now I cannot be at a court. So I'm going to load a video um, for, the, for the app to run. Uh, it actually runs exactly the same as you use it on a court. First of all, you just need to hold your phone kind of uh, steadily. You can either, either hold it with your hand or you know, like putting on a tripod is a better way. Um, and as long as the camera see the whole court, you can put it anywhere at the court, uh, it will start working. Um, so right now you see the AI already detected the pool. Once you felt like you're ready to start, you just press next. The AI will automatically um, recognize the court for you as well. Um, it's pretty accurate, even, even though the line looks pretty messy. Uh, but we, 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 we trained the AI in a way that you know, it, it is pretty accurate for most of the court. So once you're ready, uh, you can start um, tracking the shot. One. Can you Two. guys hear the sound too? Yeah, we hear yep, sounds Yep, so this is uh, pretty uh, obvious. It's tracking the make misses and Four out where of five. Uh, the shooter is shooting the ball from. Six. Having the audio feedback immediately. Seven. Because everything is running on the phone. So uh, all the AI is running on the phone. Eight. So we can give feedback immediately. Nine. Rather than these simple feedback, we actually can Nine out offer of ten. something even more advanced. We call these shot Eleven. signs. So um, for each shot, we Twelve. can recognize what's the type of shot. It is 13. the release time, meaning how fast you put up the shot, release 14. angle, and th things like that. Release angle is one of the things that's pretty um, important for shooting. 
fifty two so degrees. Know how consistent how consistent you are. Fifty you degrees. Can turn it on and just keep shooting. Fifty four degrees. Tell you every shot, how you're doing on. Forty nine degrees. Sixty four degrees. Seventeen out of twenty. Well. Fifty seven degrees. Fifty four degrees. All right, so if, when you finish a session, uh, we can give you immediately your summary. Um, there's some gamification stuff like a leaderboard badges. Um, we'll also give a more detailed summary of how you did in the session, uh, your accuracy on each shot, your accuracy on a per song basis. Cut down the video for you uh, for each shot, and you can review both the data and the video itself. Uh, we can zoom into the shooter, and you can also turn on slow motion to kind of uh, look at your shooting form, for example. So this is um, one of our very first feature uh, that we built. And indeed, we, we, we just used that um, to get our first couple rounds of funding uh, because this by itself is already very useful for a lot of uh, serious basketball players in the US. They practice shots every day, hundreds of shots every day. Before home court, they actually wouldn't know even how much shot they put up. Like some of them serious enough to use paper and pencil to calm. But now with home court, you know, it's, it's a lot easier. And obviously we give them a lot more useful information than just um, paper and pencil. Uh, I do want to show you a couple more uh, feature from home court after shooting or shot tracking. Because basketball is not just about shooting. Uh, it's also, you know, there's also ball handling and, and, and physical exercise. So other than just give you feedback, um, like you know, giving you data on how you perform on, on a workout, uh, we also use our technology to create this kind of interactive experiences. Basically, you just uh, need to put down your phone or iPad uh, on the ground. For example, like, like this, using a basketball as a stand. Um, it can track the ball, it can track your motion and provide this kind of interactive, interactive uh, ball handling training experiences. Uh, we can even look at one, some of these, you know, some of our users on how they're doing it. Um, like this is a leaderboard uh, that composed with the global user. Um, there's a lot of users doing it in, just in this month like um, this one, for example. This is one of the ball control uh, exercise that require uh, the user to dribble the ball and have the ball touch the right knot. And on the left, you can see we also make it a more gamified experience. So he's indeed competing with other players in the, in the, in the wall and, and seeing the score kind of climb up um, sort of in a real time um, situation. Other than ball handling, we also have uh, something even more broad uh, for exercise, general exercise, which is also important for basketball training. For example, steam stamina. We have similar concept. Um, we can we can you know bring all these AR technology to, to 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 make all these like physical exercise more fun and more engaging. So of course, like we have a lot more other feature like your profile, tracking all your, your statistics, capturing your video, let you join team and com community, things like that. Um, but I'm gonna kind of stop here at introducing the app. And you know, the app is free to download. So feel free to uh, uh, download and take a look and play around yourself. A lot of those exercises actually um, can play at home. So uh, John, I, I do have one more slide to show, which is about the company's history. Um, and, and, and then we can kind of go, go on to the next one. Uh, so this is you know, just a few, I would say you know, milestone or, or some important event of the company that I want to share with you guys. Uh, we sort of started 2017, uh, May, and we launched at 2018, roughly uh, February. So that's, that's the first moment we kind of um, publicly announced the app and, and we announced it at the Boston MIT's Boston Analytics Conference. Um, that's actually the moment we met Steve Nash uh, and Jeremy Lin and both of them um, 
turns out become one of our early investor and, and supporter. Uh, they really gave us a lot of help. Uh, a lot of story there I can tell, <laughs> I can save it for later too. Um, the, the second uh, big moment for us is actually September 2018, um, the Apple iPhone event. Uh, you can see at, 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 at the picture there, that's my partner and CEO, David, uh, with Steve Nash uh, on the Apple stage. Um, that's, that's actually the moment when, when Apple uh, released the iPhone 10 and we build a shot signs. That's the thing I just showed you, uh, tracking like the advanced step of a shot. Um, and, and, and we use that technology to demonstrate uh, how powerful <laughs> the latest iPhone is. Uh, and that, that's actually the only iPhone that, that can enable such technology. And obviously all the, all the later iPhone and iPad can do that too. Um, that's a pretty big moment for us because um, because after that, like basically a lot more uh, partners, people, users, or, or general public aware of Homeport. And Apple sort of, you know, like kind of give us uh, a, a big stamp, I would say, you know, it's like a credible technology, it's, it's something real. Uh, because honestly, before that, even, even though we can capture some user, we have some early adopter really love us. One of the problem they told us about is like, you know, when they tell their friend about Homeport, some, some of them actually don't believe, you know, if a mobile phone app can just check their shot uh, magically. Um, with, with Apple showing home court on stage, that really gave us the, gave us the, uh, the, the credibility. And then, you know, uh, that sort of uh, kind of uh, kick-started a lot of conversation with, with, with big companies like uh, Wilson, uh, Adidas, and, and even the NBA. And that sort of lead to the, the, the other big milestone that's 2019 July. We, we, we turned out uh, fortunate enough to, to close the Series A round with the NBA leading, as well as uh, um, a few NBA ownership group, uh, including uh, the Brooklyn Nets, which is uh, owned by Joe Chai, um, uh, right now the president of uh, Alibaba. Uh, and, and that obviously kicked up a lot of exciting partnership uh, with the NBA too. So, so now if you go to home court, you can see um, a lot of um, NBA activity that's uh, officially branded uh, and also even created uh, with some of the players of the NBA. Um, the, last, uh, the last thing I want to say, which is uh, not quite a milestone, but, but, but an interesting period we're going through right now um, is the 2020 COVID period. Uh, right before that, uh, let, 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 me, let me take it back. So, so right before that, uh, or even right now, Home court is mostly about basketball, but uh, COVID kicks in, and it it actually it actually uh, give home court a, a few different interesting um, dimensions, or I would say you know like there's some 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 phenomenon that happened that that none of us would expect. Um, first of all, um, a lot of basketball activity actually go virtual. Uh, at the very beginning, we we were thinking, oh, it might be not a good thing for us because you know like sports is gonna cancel and be kind of uh, pause the season, a lot of the high school, like college basketball kind of cancel. Um, but indeed, you know, basketball go virtual, especially basketball training. Um, so that gives us indeed a, a pretty good lift. And other even more interesting thing is, uh, we find our home court is, is actually a little bit more than just basketball. Uh, I show a couple pictures right here at the, at the bottom right. Um, during the COVID period, we actually see a lot of uh, other athletes hacking around home court, you know, a soccer player, you can see this uh, hockey player, roller play player, um, hacking the home court physical exercise drill, soccer player hacking the home court ball and then go to, to do their own exercise. Um, and, you know, like it, it, it really gives us new dimension and new thinking on, oh, um, the possibility of, of the home court technology. Uh, with, with the lift, um, actually right now, like I share some number of uh, where we are in terms of um, uh, some numbers. Like we've been tracked uh, 150 million shots in total, uh, 1.2 billion dribbles and, and, and things like that. Um, and of course, you know, like the COVID period is still on and <laughs> home court still going. Um, and I, I will just pause here uh, about talk about the home court history. Okay, well, Philip, that was that was that was great. You actually answered a lot of the questions that I wanted to ask, um, <laughs> but but luckily, but but I think I think that one of the one of the big ones, and so I mean, I think that I mean, if you look at kind of where where you are and where your where your company is, in a certain sense, you guys have made it. 
Um, but at the same time, obviously, on the one hand, there's there's still a lot more to do, I'm sure. Uh, but then on the other hand, you know, um, you're not necessarily an overnight success either. There was a lot of hard work uh, that went into this. So I guess kind of starting from the beginning, I mean, where where did the idea uh, for uh, home court actually actually come from? Right. Um, so uh, we have four co-founders. Actually, four of us were colleagues and friends in Apple. We worked together for a while. And, and we all quit Apple before starting this company. So, so we quit Apple, take a little bit of break and start brainstorming uh, on, on, on some ideas. We, we just want to you know, get together and, and do something uh, exciting together. Um, and why home court, it really boils down to, to, to passion. And there's two kinds of passion. Uh, one is technology, because all of us are actually, we're actually engineering manager back in Apple. Um, when we look into all those ideas that we came up with, that there was, you know, like some typical, you know, e-commerce, uh, social, blah, blah, blah idea. Uh, only the idea with, um, you know, some kind of hardcore technology get us excited. And, and we also felt like that fits our strings very well. Um, so among some of those ideas uh, or, or some of those, um, you know, technology, computer vision is, is one of that uh, back in three years ago. You know, that, that time computer vision was pretty premature. And you know, I, I think I think we are really fortunate that we, we catch the, the, the bloom of computer vision at the right time. Because when we started at 2017, even core ML in Apple uh, iOS hasn't released yet. So in our first version, we actually started with the more primitive technology in Apple. Um, but then core ML come out in 2017 uh, WWDC. Um, so that's number one. It's really the technology fit. The second, obviously, is, is, is basketball. <laughs> so uh, I'm a big basketball fan. Uh, I watch every single playoff game, uh, every single minute. <laughs> and, and we play, we play uh, pretty casually, we're not professional. We play casually every week in Apple. So, so this idea actually came out from, from my partner, uh, David. Uh, you know, we, we, we play every week. Sometimes we even capture our game. Uh, sometimes we felt like, oh, can we get our own statistic and highlight, you know, just like the NBA player, you know, why, why can't we get that, right? <laughs> sometimes sometime we'll cut the, the video, uh, sometimes people do it for us, but it's, it's just, you know, so, so much a hassle. So we have this idea on, oh, can, can, can a computer do that for us? Can just a phone camera do that for us? Um, and then, you know, it started to evolve to this basketball training application. Well, that's great. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's really interesting, and and I, and perhaps you you're lucky that you were able to marry two 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 passions together. I'm not sure that everyone uh, gets the chance to do that. Um, but but Edith, I'm curious. And so, as as a, as an investor in 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 home court, I mean, like when they came to you with the pitch, I mean, what was what were your first impressions? I mean, was it was it one of those things where like you were like, oh my gosh, I have to invest in this right now, or is it like mm, <laughs> they still need a bit of work? My first impression was, oh man, it's the one app I probably won't be able to get, actually use it because <laughs> I'm a very short, a horrible basketball player. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I remember meeting David and, and Philip uh, in Palo Alto and just sort of talking about the idea. And, and, and actually, you know, Dave, David actually is a, is, is a classic example of a Hong Kong entrepreneur. Um, you know, Philip went to school in you know, a CUHK and then I think David went to Hong Kong University. Um, you know, all, the team really didn't, uh, before he actually sold a company to, to Apple called Edigrid. Um, and in my head was, I just really, really wanted to support Hong Kong founders. Um, as much as now there is a group of us now um, in Founders Hong Kong and mentoring a lot of founders in Hong Kong, there are not enough of us. And I really wanted to like build our own, you know, instead of PayPal Mavia, but the Hong Kong Mavia in tech um, in the Valley and then sort of connect both worlds. So um, it was a no brainer. I really wanted to support Philip and his team. Thank you for that, Edith. <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 so Philip, yeah, so, so, so you're lucky enough to, to, to obviously have some great co-founders, some great, some, some great experience yourself, as well as um, some, some, uh, some great uh, support as well. But I'm curious, I mean, like, you know, when we're looking at, you know, uh, VCs, one of the biggest things they always talk about is execution and having, having the right team. 
Um, and so, in, you know, for you guys, what would you say is, was one of your bigger challenges? Uh, was it, I mean, you mentioned before, you know, maybe uh, get, was it getting users or was it, was it more on the technical side um, or was it something, something else? Um, <laughs> many challenges <laughs> doing a startup, of course. I think, I think at the very beginning to your point, like tech, so, so I, let, let me frame it this way. Um, we are, to start with, we are really building something that, that we haven't seen in the market at all. Uh, so, you know, even right now, honestly, like right now, indeed, there's a few more <laughs> similar application out there, like using post estimation to do those exercises uh, that I show you. Um, but back then, there's really no one doing that. So, so we have tackled a few things at the very beginning. One is the technology, to your point. We, we don't even know whether, whether that's possible. <laughs> None of us is a computer vision uh, expert. We actually learn it ourselves, and that's what we like, by the way. Uh, number two, since there's no one in the market, <laughs> we don't know whether there's a market. Uh, and and I, I would say we're still like, trying uh, very hard to, to, to expand our market right now. Um, so, so there's a market question. And the third is really, you know, like a little bit on the investment question. It's like, you know, like, is this something, uh, is the basketball market big enough, for example, like to, to, to capture investors? We, we all know that, you know, it's, it doesn't feel like, you know, it doesn't feel like a, a brilliant idea or whatever, right? So we have to tackle all these three. And, and I would say that, you know, each of this is a challenge. Um, so uh, we, we spend, we have done spend a lot of time, like four months, like uh, day and night, you know, building our first prototype. Uh, and, and, and we started, I think, I think probably Edith has sort of see that at that time, maybe a little bit later. But uh, we, we, do, we, we use our first four months to pretty much build the technology and prototype. And, and that only works in certain situations. We, we love California because California has the perfect weather and the perfect lighting to, to have it work outdoor. Uh, and, and I think we brought it out to investor at that time. Um, and, and with a caveat to tell them, okay, you know, like, you know, we, we, we know this is only working in certain situations right now, but, but we're confident because we use four months. We know that we can push the technology further. Uh, we're confident that we can improve it. Uh, and, and, and fortunate enough that, you know, some, some of our investor, uh, you know, believe in us, believe the execution to your point, because uh, um, to be honest, like in Silicon Valley um, or in Hong Kong, I know like it's, it's indeed not easy to, to, to get a good engineering team to, to, to build something uh, with a pretty hardcore technology. Uh, and I, I believe, you know, our commitment and, you know, our, our, our four month of prototype kind of um, gives, gives some of the investor confidence um, um, to, to, to invest in us. So, so did I hear did I hear correctly? So so uh, when you guys first started this, you had no experience with machine learning. So but all four of you had to had to learn how to how to how to you know actually build out this computer vision model. Right. Uh, so yeah, my partner David and, and I would do a little bit more. Uh, so David would do a little bit more business stuff. Uh, I would do both customer business and the technology. Um, but but yes, none of us <laughs> know anything about computer vision and AI. Wow. I mean, it, to me, it, to me, you know, it just shows how far AI has come. I mean, the fact that, you know, an engineer with, with, uh, with not that much experience in, in, the, in the field can, can uh, mass that on the one hand, obviously is a, is a testament to your, to your ability, but I think also, you know, just, just how far the, the technology itself has come and, and you know, uh, how it's, it's actually become a bit more accessible, um, it looks like. So, um, so Edith, I mean, I'm curious, so, we're, so you know, Philip was just talking a little bit about uh, you know, how, the, how they, they uh, did the division of labor on the founding team. Um, and so when you're looking at a startup, I mean, how important is the founding team? And is there like something specific that you can share about what a good founding team looks like or what a good CEO looks like when you're, when you're evaluating a company? A good founding team looks like Philip. That, that, that <laughs> is it. <laughs> I, I think, you know, I, I particularly focus on more uh, early to A, um, seed, pre-seed, and sometimes definitely have invested in company where there was even no product and founding team, the team is everything. Um, there's many, many particular criteria you always look at, but at the end of the day, it's really all about grit and resilience. And if you don't know something, there's, I, I think, you know, all, all of us, me included, I went, went to high school in Hong Kong. I think growing up, like all of us been, being trained to be really good 
employee. And when you actually building a company, there's no high hierarchy. You pretty much have to learn everything. So school is really about learning how to learn. Um, there's no, if there's a roadblock, you have to figure it out. You have to solve problem. And that solving problem is constantly every single day. And there's no, in this world, there's no overnight success. So as you're talking to the founder, it's really for us to learn how they think. Um, and I think in this case, you know, Philip and, and David and, and their team, they're very, um, they love basketball. Um, you can see like the fire in their eyes that they just love it so much that even though obviously, you know, a great engineering manager come from Apple, you can, you know, particularly in the Valley, you can build a lot of things and get funding just because of the founding team background. But in this particular case is, I don't think that they would do anything else. Um, and the fact that, and I remember, I, I forgot it's Philip or, or David, um, and, and, and I guess you guys need to like ask your wives for uh, approval <laughs> to, to, to quit. And I remember, and then they're like on board. And this is something that I, I can tell you, like when I first, b before Race Capital, before 500, I was working on a startup. I didn't even want to tell my mother because they, I, I think like in the Asian culture to quit a cushy job, it's just like, what? And, and so in some sense to Asian particularly is, is a great test, testament that they really believe in what they're doing. Um, so that's uh, some of the things that I look for. That's great. Thank you so much. And actually, that kind of that segues very nicely into uh, the next question that I wanted to ask, kind of open ended to both of you. I mean, you're both in Hong Kong. Uh, excuse me, you're both from Hong Kong. Uh, you're both in 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 California. Um, and, and so, you know, I've been I've been in Hong Kong just for a few months, um, but it does seem like the the uh, the entrepreneurship uh, uh, ecosystem isn't isn't quite as robust as it was uh, that I experienced in the mainland. But even in the mainland, I mean, like if you asked, you know, 10 years ago, uh, if you were trying to start, a, start, trying to, you know, create your own startup, your family as a Chinese, your family would have been like, well, you're just, you're just absolutely crazy. And so I'm curious, I mean, I mean, you know, Edith, you kind of mentioned something similar. And so I'm wondering if you guys could just talk a little bit about that and kind of the challenge of, um, of being entrepreneurial, but kind of, um, you know, uh, bucking some of the, some of the uh, traditional stability that I think a lot of Asian families families look for. I mean, what was what, what were some of the bigger the bigger challenges in that? And then also kind of um, you know, looking at the current environment in Hong Kong, I mean, do you feel like do you feel like that is that is changing recently? Philip, go ahead. You go first. Um, that's a that's an interesting question. Uh, so to, to be honest, like I left Hong Kong at 2006, right, right when I graduated. Um, and, and I haven't quite been working in Hong Kong. You know, I've, I've had an intern job back in university, back in Hong Kong. So I, I wouldn't, it's not fair for me to tell, you know, what it is like to work and, and, and really live in Hong Kong. Uh, I do travel back, uh, but I can, I can share a little bit of the perspective I have um, uh, here. I, I think um, the Silicon Valley, to be honest, has a little bit better uh, safety net per se uh, to, to, to to encourage, you know, entrepreneurship or you know, entrepre entrepreneurial, you know, uh, um, you know, like uh, things, for example, because like for me, you know, I, I obviously, you know, quitting a, a pretty stable job and and honestly, like uh, really well paid off. Um, looking at the stock of Apple and all these companies, you can tell. Uh, and, and and if I look for money, I would never quit the job. I mean, I would, I would not think, oh, I build this startup, it's gonna make me rich. No. <laughs> I'll just stay in Apple for a few more years, you know, make good investment and I, I can retire, probably. <laughs> but, but, but no, I mean, like, it's really about myself. Um, it's, 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 it's something that, you know, I, I, I felt like, you know, I don't get in big corporation. It's like, you know, you, you, there's a lot more things in life that, that, that for me personally, I wanted to do uh, rather than, you know, just, just for example, living a, a stable life. Um, so, so at that time, uh, I can just, just share my personal story there. Um, you know, like obviously I have, a, I have a wife, I have a, I have two kids, actually I have two daughters, uh, pretty young. Um, you know, it's, it's not like there's no challenge on quitting, but 
But to me, I just ask myself one question. It's like, you know, uh, ask my heart one question. It's like, you know, what makes me feel more excited? Uh, one, if I continuously do, do, do this job and, you know, become pretty comfortable, uh, live a good life for maybe the rest of, you know, 10, 20 years. Or, you know, uh, I, I say, you know, I, I'm ready that uh, in that particular moment, um, you know, my, my, my salary, for example, I'm very transparent here. My salary and compensation is, is the top in my, in my whole life. Am I ready to accept that and, and doing this startup? Um, you know, I just asked my heart um, and I asked my wife <laughs> and both say yes. So, you know, like I, I think, you know, um, it's, it's almost a no brainer for me to, to do this. Um, and, 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 and to get back to your question, I think in Silicon Valley, one thing uh, which is a little bit better than Hong Kong right now is, is you know, like, for example, if, I, I, if this journey, you know, doesn't get me a, a good financial return at the end, uh, I, I believe I can always, you know, go back to, to find a job, uh, a, a job that, you know, can get me uh, a, a living income, for example, and still have a life. Um, but, but, you know, one thing I can share to, to, to the people in Hong Kong or to entrepreneurs, maybe, that there's always this struggle. Um, but right now, um, you know, I, I think, honestly, if you ask me back to, to, to work for those big corporations, I, I have a hard time to, to, to even imagine because <laughs> an entrepreneurship journey is just, just so much exciting. Um, uh, that, that, that's from me, Edith, if you want to you wanna share something. I, I think, you know, Hong Kong, there is a, a, definitely a lot of things that are sort of lacking in terms of ecosystem. But, but just to start with though, you know, even though Hong Kong is not necessarily as robust as Beijing, I do think that there's, you know, actually quite a few number of, you know, unicorn already from WeLab to SenseTime to Cloak to GoGoVan, Lala Move. We, we definitely have companies, unicorn level that is in Hong Kong. Um, but I think, you know, every single one of the ecosystem and Beijing definitely have achieved that similar to Silicon Valley. There's these big platform, right? So the, the Apple, Google, Amazon, and Facebook, and the equivalent in, in, in China now is even more, right? It's not just the BAT, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent. There's a TMD, right? There's a Taodiao, DD, and Meituan. So these big companies become cultivate amazing engineering talent. And I think like the biggest complaint, you know, when Philip and I really involved with Founders Hong Kong, a lot of the founders in Hong Kong would tell us there's not enough talent in terms of product manager. There's not enough growth hacker. There's not enough of, I mean, there's definitely good engineers coming out from Hong Kong University, CU and Hong Kong uh, UST. Um, at the same time, the young engineer need support and be able to have, you know, the ecosystem to help them, to groom them. And then I guess, you know, for us, we need to start somewhere. Um, Hong Kong, I don't think, even though, I think the worst time is the best time. And, you know, we, what, that's why we're doing the series, right? And that's why we wanted to contribute because there are something, a lot of pieces missing, but we also have a lot of pieces together already. Um, so as much as we can, um, we really wanted to, you know, sort of connect the dot. We, literally, there are so many amazing, um, you know, like one of the co-founders of Xiaomi, uh, KK Wong, um, originally from Hong Kong. Um, Joe, Joe, Joe Wu, who's like the, the founder or former CEO of 91, uh, sold it to Baidu for 1.9 billion. He's, he's born and raised in Meifu. So there are amazing, amazing Hong Kong entrepreneur, um, but it seems like it's spread around the world. We need them to come back and hang out with us and have this conversation so then we can grow our own ecosystem. Uh, well, that's great. Thank you so much, Philip, Philip, and Edith, for for that for that insight. We do have a uh, about uh, ten minutes or so left uh, for this uh, public portion of the talk, uh, and so um, we're going to open it up to uh, to the audience. We have uh, actually quite a few questions, um, and so I think one of the one of the one of the most burning ones, uh, Philip, is uh, do you guys have plans to expand outside of outside of basketball? You know, you mentioned that people are hacking, um, you know, for for some of the exercises. Um, you know, when I was watching uh, the demo video and doing some research, I was actually asking the same question because it seems like, you know, there is there is room for for applying it. But I wonder, you know, are are that what what the technical difficulties might 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 be like? So, what are your what are your plans? Can you share anything? 
Yeah, for sure. Um, indeed, if you look into, uh, if you look at the home court app, we, we already have, you know, some of the not basketball, non basketball specific exercise tracker that, that, you know, we can, we can, we can track, uh, simple things like, uh, jumping jack, uh, high knee, you know, push up, things like that, or even things like, you know, you can follow the leader on a longer form fitness, uh, program. So, um, you know, we, we indeed, you know, like <laughs> Edith knows too, like we, in our very early pitch, you know, we never say next team is, is, is only about basketball. Uh, home court is one of the product from next team and it's about basketball, but um, we believe our technology uh, could expand to, to many other sports and fitness. So uh, to your point, John, uh, we, we do have some of the technology uh, ready in fact, we, we, we start investing more during the COVID because we see this phenomenon. So, so, so now um, uh, the, the question is really, you know, when is the good time to, to, to seriously address uh, the other uh, sport or, you know, like even go into general fitness because uh, obviously from our learning, uh, doing everything in the same app doesn't work. And, and there's also a lot, you know, to do in basketball. We still have growing basketball user. We actually get more engagement uh, because of the COVID time that more people know about us. So, so, so for us, it's really about um, when is the good time and, and, you know, when is the good time that we're playing or basketball, you know, uh, it's great. We, 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 we can sort of uh, get more resources to the, the other part or, or hire the, the right people for, for handling, you know, soccer or, you know, or other sport, for example. So that's plan. Uh, we, 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 we don't know when yet. Um, and the technology is fairly ready. You're not you so you're not so you're not too worried about someone and coming coming and try and trying to eat your lunch then. Um, yeah, it, it will happen. <laughs> I, I I think like for us it's like we 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 believe in you know the uh, the the constant innovation uh, because you know like obviously we are we are actually the one who who try to break through this blue ocean and it's very challenging. Uh, uh, very often if you you are in a market with competitor that's not necessarily a bad sign. It's really, you know, like then, then there's a good market, and and you yeah, know, exactly. Right. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I think you know what what you said earlier. You know, when you guys were first starting, you know, you weren't really sure if there actually was a market, um, which I think is is one of those fascinating things because a lot of times, I mean, especially looking at at a, at a product like Home Court, I mean, a lot of people, most people are going to experience it when it's already relatively mature, when it already has a, a decent user base, and so you've been able to iterate uh, constantly. Um, but I can imagine, you know, when you're first starting, just the amount of uncertainty that, that you have to go with, that, 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 that you have to deal with, you know, when you're a four person team trying to figure things out and you still don't know if there's actually, if people are actually interested um, in, or, you know, in dealing with challenges to grow. I think it's, it's, it's really kind of fascinating um, that you that like, and you guys have gone out there, you've been successful and you've had, and you've, you've had to make, make a market out of, out of uh, this type of product. Um, but, uh, but I wanted to circle back to Edith. There's another question from, um, from the audience. Um, aside from home court, are there any other ho Hong Kong startups you think will be the next big thing to make it to Silicon Valley? That is an awesome question. <laughs> well, I think there's quite a few companies. Um, by the way, like the one that I counted are the one that sort of started in Hong Kong and then quite a number of them actually either mm, I think uh, Cluck right now is also like in Southeast Asia in certain countries. Actually, sometimes I still open the Cluck app, even in the US, it still works. So they have experience here as well. Um, and then if you also look at like, there's some sort of import and most, most let's say like WeLab. WeLab is doing really, really well in China, but they're also expanding to Southeast Asia. So I actually think that longer term and especially right now, like traveling is such a, such a hassle for everybody for Hong Kong companies to necessarily come to the US, um, unless even though, honestly, I don't actually, as, as a VC, we are literally meeting founders from all over the world these days. Um, so physically, you don't necessarily have to be in the Valley, but I do think that you know, coming, if you wanna expand in a market, it is actually best to be in that market so you can really learn it. So in some sense, I think for Hong Kong startup, to expand sort of geographically. Yes, Hong Kong is very small, but it's a good starting point. It's actually a decision. Every single Hong Kong founder need to think about, okay, um, I started here, but what's step two? Um, 
China is a huge market. I actually don't think that just because you come to the U.S. make you a better company or whatnot. It's really a decision that you have to make. And then I'm also aware of a lot of the, I think more and more Asian startup, Hong Kong or other or Chinese startup, instead of coming to the U.S., probably going to China and then Southeast Asia. And you're seeing a lot of the a lot of Chinese company are not. I mean, TikTok is is an exception to the rule. 99% of them actually grow so fast in China, they don't even need to come to the US. But obviously, if any of you in the audience want to come to the US, Philip and I are here for you. We're, we want to give you a resource um, support. Um, we're obviously very familiar in the US market, but, but um, I think you know, coming to the US doesn't make you a better or worse. It's really just a matter of choice. Yeah, no, I think that's that's that, that's great advice, and I think that's that's one of the things that that I that I've seen, you know, in 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 covering startups is that, and this is one of the things you hear VCs talking about all the time. It's product market fit, so it really doesn't matter which market you're in, as long as you're making a product that 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 is is fit for that market that people want to use, and and you know that people are willing to pay for. Um, so um, so Philip. Um, uh, someone is asking, how did you pitch and convince your first major backer? How long did it take and how nervous were you? Um, that's interesting. So uh, I, can, I, can, I can answer it in two ways. One, uh, as, so, so I actually go, you know, pitch come together with David uh, at the very beginning. And, you know, like since we, we kind of started with um, a, a, a list of uh, angel or, you know, friends and family, that's kind of um, uh, typical. Uh, and we, we kind of intentionally not trying to get big check at the beginning uh, and, and save, save a little bit for later uh, on that. Uh, so, you know, we, 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 we turns out to be fairly uh, smooth in, in getting like the first few uh, friends and family um, um, to, to get in. I personally, one of the interesting experience for me at, at, at the first pitch is really uh, to, to get together with a friend. Uh, I, I didn't even try to pitch, you know, I, I just happened to know, you know, one of my friends who's in VC and I, I was trying to practice. <laughs> I'm trying to say, okay, uh, David has experience before, you know, he's like, uh, he, he, he saw his company at the first time. My, my, uh, it's my first time. Um, so I, I, I told a friend, I want to practice, you know, like uh, my own back, you know, kind of share to him. And, and interestingly, you know, he just felt interested. Uh, and then he said, oh, can I try? And, and, and we just try at the court right next to my door, you know, outdoor at a court, and, and it works. Uh, it works in that condition, again, <laughs> at the very beginning. Um, and, and he already very interested and saying, oh, uh, do you, uh, can, can I get to know you and your team more and things like that? And he got it. Um, and indeed, he becomes one of the more major kind of um, investor in the, in the next couple of rounds. Uh, so, you know, I think because I wasn't even trying to pitch, I wasn't that nervous at that time, <laughs> so the first time. And also, you know, that kind of made me feel like, you know, like, you know, obviously you want to prepare for your pitch, but, but at the end of the day, you know, like smart investor, you know, they, they, they know, and you know, like it's really about what you do and, and they, will, they want to know about you. They know who you are, they know how committed you are. And, and, and if you build a good product, uh, if you committed, persistent as, as Edith said, um, obviously have some good market traction. I, I think, you know, uh, the pitch would just come together. So yeah, so kind of going going on on that, and um, someone else is asking, what are some tips you would give to student entrepreneurs in the ideation and uh, product development stage? So open to either Philip or or Edith, whoever wants to uh, take that. Ideation and open, ideation and product development stage. Yeah. Um, I can I can take it first, Edith. Uh, um, so. So I want to kind of look back to what you said. Like when I say we don't know whether there's a market, uh, we really didn't, you know, just build a prototype and 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 you know let four months run by and, and you know and, and and try it out. I think that's that's kind of that would waste a lot of time, right? So so I think one of the first thing is really you have to get out and and talk to as many uh, potential users as possible, as well as you know run some quick and dirty tests. Uh, if you, you know, get a chance to read some of those, some of those, you know, lean startup or, you know, how to eat trade on MVP kind of thing. Um, so for us, we actually started with, um, you know, going, going to players and going to coach 
uh, and tell us, tell them about oh, what, what do you think if we can use a phone to track your game, for example. And, and indeed, the short tracking idea come from the coaches. Uh, they just tell us, that would be awesome if you can track my game. But if you can use the phone to just count my player's shot, that's already a very useful application. They just say, oh, I tell them, you know, I tell all my players to go shoot 300 shots a day, and they always come back to say they did it. <laughs> I, I don't believe them, you know, <laughs> and I don't even know whether they did it or not. So if you can have a phone to just track the shot, uh, tell me how many they, they, they put up, it's already very useful for me. So, so, so for us, we actually evolved to that much simpler problem technically and, and, and with a much more certain, you know, like use cases. Um, that actually came out from, you know, going to the market and talk to people. Um, obviously, there's more tricks at the beginning of, you know, you can even test your messaging on, 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 on you know, social media or you know, SEO, you know, build a primitive prototype, uh, test, test your messaging on a few different cohort uh, and see, you know, whether that's fine or not. Like you can, you, can, you can test based on, you know, your cost per acquisition, for example, like compare with other apps and things like that. So, so I think a quick iteration um, and really step out to the market is, is one of the key uh, at the beginning. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I think like the key thing, uh, again, it depends on you're working on consumer or, or B2B, because right? B2B and B2C is actually quite different. And like I've, I've been actually very focused on more to developer and to business, less of a consumer because because what Philip is doing is hard. <laughs> like doing consumer focused thing is really, really tough. Um, but mostly because it is actually very costly to acquire user. Having said that, I do think that, um, and, and then also by the way, like mobile growth is very, very different from doing e-commerce and doing other things. So every single area that, whatever that you have an idea, somebody have done it before. So I think like the key thing is that, you know, there's so many online, doesn't matter for Chinese market, for US market, that you need to be very, very clear about like your KPI. And for ideas sometimes it's just really get out of the building, talk to the users, um, and, and then also like ideally, usually like for early stage team that we look for, we would actually rather to have a couple engineers first before you're trying to like sell the world because you are destined to fail actually for the first, I don't know, months or maybe even sometimes take years to figure out like the, what's the right path. Um, so it's okay. So you have to spend time with users. I would rather particularly for consumer, there is you know, 100 or 200 users that cannot live without you. So you are building a painkiller, then you're building a nice to have supplement, vitamin. It's not, especially for investor like me, if you're telling me all this stuff, but nobody really use it, there's no point. So really focus on, laser focus on who are you serving and what are you trying to solve and then build on top of it. So Edith, so it's kind of, uh, uh segues into um, uh, an audience question. We only have a few more minutes, maybe maybe just a little, a little bit short. Um, so, I mean, is that is that why 90% of startups fail is because they're not, they're not focused or is it something else you think? Um, I, I, building a startup is hard. So first off, as Philip said, if you, if you wanna make a salary, and by the way, it doesn't make you less of a person just because, you know, you want to work in a company, it's, it's okay. Yeah. It's more or less is that building a company is just so hard because it's not just, it's not only about product market fit, you have to do fundraising. Now you, especially as a founder, you're responsible for all your employees. Like if, if you don't raise enough money or generate revenue, your, your, your project is over. So in some sense, there's a lot of pressure um, to build a company. Um, but I, I do think that particularly for Hong Kong entrepreneur, I think sometimes it is a matter of focus because it seems like grass is always greener. Um, if a, a user tell you, oh, you should build this, um, end up you're building like all kind of feature. Um, so another thing I think particularly for Hong Kong founders is actually you, your product vision, you need to learn how to say no. It's not about making every, like every single thing you have to learn which one is the true killer feature. Um, anyway, I can't even begin there, like how many ways that you can fail. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. 
I, I do want to add one thing for Hong Kong founders. I, I think like you, you actually mentioned that before. It's like the, the scale the scale stage of the Hong Kong company is also a very critical stage uh, because, you know, like obviously you can start in Hong Kong, but, but very often we also see, you know, uh, a lot of founder kind of uh, limited the, the, the audiences or limited the thinking kind of within Hong Kong. Uh, and, you know, like as a tech startup, you just have to, you know, at a certain point have to scale. So, you know, one thing, you know, it's, it's much harder to say, uh, to do than say, it's like, I think, for founders in Hong Kong, it's, it's better to have more like a global product mindset at day one. Uh, even though you, you start in Hong Kong, totally fine, but, but you can just do something really specific for, 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 for a small group of, of you know, Hong Kong people, for example. So I think, I think that's maybe one of the advice I can, I can share. All right, well, great. So uh, very, very last question, uh, Philip, we have about one minute left. Uh, have you ever played one-on-one uh, -on -one with uh, with Nash or Lynn? And can you give us any shooting tips? I, I definitely, I, I wish, uh, but um, no, I I was fortunate enough, actually some of, some of us were fortunate enough to get a training session from Steve. Uh, so he, he, he teaches us how to shoot uh, a free throw. Um, I would rather share a video that, that, that he teaches about free throw than, than telling the audience. Oh, <laughs> well, that's great. So I think I think that's it for um, for this for this public uh, uh, part of the um, part of the program. So I'll hand it back over to uh, to Alice. Thank you. Thank you to all three of you. Can you? I can't get the video. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Edith. Thank you, Philip, and thank you, John. You. Uh, this is one of the great discussion, and I am so glad we're starting this series. Uh, I think I got some great quote from Edith, worth time is the best time. And that has been my motto this year uh, in the kind of program that we have Asia Society Hong Kong has pivoted toward. And uh, we had uh, last year, 15,000 people who came to our program. And this year, because we pivoted uh, online, uh, 300,000 viewers have seen our program. And I'm sure many of them are watching it today. So thank you, John. Uh, for a wonderful being a wonderful moderator. And Philip, thank you for being such an inspirational uh, speaker. I think uh, thank, a lot thank of- Thank you for having us. Well, I think we're gonna be do hearing more from you because uh, another thing that we have done this year is also collaborating a lot more with our other centers, especially our Asia Society Northern California Center. I know that Edith and Philip are familiar with or are involved in, and we look forward to doing more programs like this in the coming year. Um, because this is really good time to, to test out and, and grow the ecosystem. Ecosystem doesn't have to be physical as, as we have discovered, it can be uh, virtual. So we are very, very excited uh, that we um, uh, have launched this, this, uh, this series uh, on, you know, really on startup. And Hong Kong does have uh, these wonderful um, entrepreneur, entrepreneurs. I mean, Hong Kong was made. Uh, founded by entrepreneurs, uh, you know, 50, 100 years ago. Uh, but I think right now with the tech space, I know there is going to be more um, area of collaboration. And so again, uh, thank you, Edith. Thank you, Philip. And we look forward to uh, welcoming you all back to continue the discussion this next year. And we're now going to hand it over to our private discussion uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Philip and, and John. And have a wonderful afternoon. And we look forward to welcoming you back at future Asia Society programs. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you. Mm -hmm.